she could do it. <laughs> across the fence. I'm Will Michael. The eastern hemlock tree is Vermont's seventh most common tree. Hemlocks can live hundreds of years. They grow more than 100 feet tall, and they're significant to our forests for a number of reasons, which we'll discuss today. But unfortunately, the eastern hemlock is under threat. A new management guide for eastern hemlock conservation in Vermont was released in late June. The guide was authored by experts from Vermont's Department of Forest, Parks and Recreation, UVM Extension, Vermont Fish and Wildlife Department, and the Atawi Project. Threats to hemlock survival include changing climate, overall forest health, and invasive species. And the guide makes clear that the number one threat is the invasive called the hemlock woolly adelgid. Uh, to learn more today, we've jo we're joined by two of the guide's authors. Ali Kasiba is a UVM Extension Assistant Professor of Forestry, and Josh Hallman is the Forest Health Program Manager with Vermont's Department of Forest, Parks, and Recreation. Good afternoon to both of you. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Well. Thanks for having us. Ellie, I'm going to start with you. Professional foresters, like both of you, refer to the eastern hemlock as a foundational species in our forest. What does that mean? Why are they sig so significant? Hemlock is what we call, uh, it's locally abundant in places and forests, and it's regionally common, and its dense canopy of evergreen foliage creates really unique characteristics in the forest underneath the trees. So this creates deep shade, um, soils that are very unique to hemlock forests, and, and hemlock often grows on steep banks adjacent to streams and water bodies, and so that dense foliage actually cools the stream water temperature it prevents erosion when we have uh, a lot of rain um, and keeps the soil intact. And so uh, a lot of aquatic wildlife and organisms really depend on hemlock forests for those unique conditions. There are something like 97 birds that use hemlock forests for their habitat or food source, uh, many mammals, something around 50 mammals, and over 100 aquatic organisms rely on, on hemlock forests. They're really important uh, for a range of ecologic, um, economic, and cultural reasons in our state. And they're beautiful, they're majestic, they're sure. fantastic. So I mentioned in the introduction about the management guide. Uh, in a nutshell, what does that say? What does it do? So the management guide really sets up the importance of hemlock. As I mentioned, the ecological importance, the cultural importance, the economic importance of the species. And it sets up all the threats that we are currently facing with hemlock. The most notable are hemlock woolly adelgid, invasive insect, and climate change threatens this species. But the guide gives landowners, homeowners, foresters, managers, some really concrete management steps that they can take um, to control um, hemlock woolly adelgid and also prevent um, further decline of the species. Uh, Josh, let me bring you into our conversation. What is this hemlock woolly adelgid? What does it do? What does it look like? How do we know what it is? All these questions sure. about what it is. Yeah, so it's, it's a small insect that uh, when present is found at the base of hemlock needles. Uh, and oftentimes what people will see is this kind of white fuzzy covering on top of it. That's what really allows you to say, oh, we have hemlock woolly adelgid here. Um, and that's kind of a protective barrier for the insect. Um, the problem with this insect is that it's, it's not native to Vermont. Um, it was first detected in the eastern U.S. Uh, in the 1950s, and so it's been around for a little while. Um, but in that time, has spread through much of the range of eastern hemlock. And one of the problems is that it's feeding on hemlock. Uh, and we're seeing some of this footage here. This is those little white dots again. Just bring us in a little bit more sure. of the science of what it is we were seeing there. So those, those white dots, that's that flocculence or that hairy kind of, or fuzzy kind of material that's yeah. on top of the hemlock woolly adelgids themselves. And you can see it here that uh, that's, that's covering the insect there as kind of a protective thing while they feed, but also through harsh environmental conditions. Um, and the challenge with, with this species is that it depletes hemlock trees of carbohydrates and nutrients that it would otherwise really need to, to function and thrive as a tree species. So when you have a heavy infestation of this insect, 
um, you can see decline of the trees uh, and ultimately it can result in tree mortality. So what's its history in Vermont? We've identified it here. How long? Where is it? Sure. So it was first detected in southern Vermont in 2007 um, in a, a forest stand there. And this is basically right over the Massachusetts border. This is in the southeast part of the Vermont? The southeast part of Vermont, exactly. It first came in in Wyndham County um, and since then has spread to, to Windsor County and one detection in Bennington County at this point. So currently it's it's been confirmed in 21 towns in Vermont spanning those three counties, um, and it, it seems to be staying relatively stable there in the southeast corner of the state right now. So I gather then the follow-up question is not, will it continue to spread, but how fast it will spread? Do we, do we know the answer to yes. that kind of question? I wouldn't say we know the answer, but it's a really good question. Um, Hemlock Willie Delgid in Vermont is at its northern range edge. So this is kind of the, the northern area where, where Hemlock Willie Delgid is found. And um, our cold winters, our cold temperatures in Vermont have kind of kept it down in that southern portion of the state for a long time. Of course, with the changing climate, that yeah. changes things, right? You we took have the words right out of my <laughs> mouth. Yeah. We have, if we're having warmer winters, we're seeing less mortality of hemlock woolly adelgid. And so that increases the odds that it could spread to other areas where hemlock is present in the state. Yep. Slowly, but again, that change in climate right. is, the, is that perhaps the key issue in, in, in its spread? It, it, it's a major one. Um, so this insect doesn't fly in Vermont or, or in the state. So um, I think there's a comparison maybe between ticks. We've seen growth of ticks as changing climate and they're moving forward. I don't know that we know that's the only reason, but again, I guess the point is these, these issues are connected. We get more invasive as we have mm -hmm. changing weather. Ali, earlier this summer, you worked in the field with Across the Fences, Ben Willis, and Ben used his drone to go up into two different forests, one infected by HWA, and uh, as we just saw on the map, he was in the southeastern part of Vermont, but he also went into a healthy hemlock forest. We're gonna see that uh, side by side. We put the healthy hemlock forest uh, on the left, and as we see that, what can you tell viewers about the impacts of this invasive and, and the risks mm -hmm. associated with losing hemlocks? Again, the beautiful forest on the left and the infected forest on the right. Right, so the first sign we sort of see when the hemlock is, hemlock woolly adelgid is feeding on the hemlock, as Josh mentioned, is we see a, a yellowing of the needles. So the tree starts looking unhealthy because it's losing its uh, um, carbohydrates and sugars, all of its food that it used. So you'll see the needles start dropping off, which we see in that unhealthy um, hemlock tree on the right side of that um, image. What then happens is a lot of other opportunistic stressors can come attack the tree. When we see this with hemlock borer, it's an insect that bores into the side of the tree. Woodpeckers then go after the borer and the bark gets stripped. So we can see multiple stressors come in following the weakened tree from hemlock woolly adelgid and it will lead to eventual death and, and um, as we're seeing in the stand mm -hmm. in southern Vermont. So this is the first stand we've seen hemlock mortality related to HWA and mortality in a forest is normal and natural and healthy but when we see a lot of trees die very quickly of one species it can really change the ecology of the site and the conditions of the site. Mm -hmm. So I mentioned all those wildlife that depend mm -hmm. on on hemlock but it also changes things like uh, the temperature of the site, the water of the I, site. I saw just in the picture alone, the video alone, the amount of light coming into the forest. Yes. I assume yeah. that that can lead to anything from forest fire dangers to uh, are there other species then that come in that that yes. now outcompete? I again, all these cycles that you're familiar with professionally. Yeah, I mean, there's no other species that will perfectly mimic hemlock when we lose it from the forest, and often when we do have hemlock woolly adelgid mortality we see in the southern Appalachians is that hardwood species come in and they don't have that dense evergreen foliage year round. And so they create a different type of forest. Mm -hmm. And so that's a really dramatic mm -hmm. change. And you mentioned fire, yes, a lot more light. Mm -hmm. We also have a lot of deadwood at once and that could um, be fodder for forest fire. So we really don't know because this is the first site we've seen in Vermont with hemlock mortality, um, but we're monitoring it very closely. And you're pointing out those uh, deciduous pieces that come in, they're no longer providing, in, in the state like Vermont, the, the deer yard, right? The hemlock is right. keeping open ground mm -hmm. or relatively open ground for deer to mm -hmm. browse through right. the season. All right, moving along. Josh, are there strategies that we have? Uh, we talked about uh, 
it, it seems to be contained, and that's Mother Nature, maybe with some uh, uh, temperature uh, mm -hmm. things that keep it down. But are there strategies that can control the hemlock woolly adelgid? Sure. So there are some things that are that are being used right now that um, can keep numbers at bay. It, it's important to know that this is not a species that we're going to be able to eradicate in the state. It, it's here, unfortunately. But there are things like biocontrol species or biological controls, which are actual predators of HWA. And what you're seeing here is uh, some of those insects that we've been fortunate enough to be able to release here in Vermont. Um, we release these each year to try and establish a population that's stable that feeds on HWA and can reduce some of the impacts of the insect on our hemlock trees in the southern part of the state. Um, as we're running short of time here, asking one or both of you to, to take a stab at that idea that what can I do as a homeowner? I do gather for a homeowner that that beetle approach is very expensive. Is, is, yeah, do true. I have other alternatives <laughs> if I have a hemlock tree or a stand of hemlocks that I care about? Yeah, that there are, depending on the level of infestation, if you have a couple branches that are infested, pruning those off is, is a good thing to do. Get them off the tree and um, burn them if you're able to do that. Um, there's don't just put them in a compost because that's going to create... Yeah, and don't take them to your neighbor that has hemlock trees that are uninfested. It's pretty important. Um, in addition to that, there are some chemical control options that you can use to, to treat if you have a heavy infestation. Um, and if you're a forest owner, you know, there are some silvicultural options that you can pursue, and, and those are outlined in the guide that we've released. And that's where we want to end today's program, which is uh, for more information to see the management guide for Eastern Hemlock Conservation in Vermont, simply go online and search for Vermont Hemlock Management Plan. That's how I found it. Uh, very easy to read, I must say, too. And also a, a warning here, a reminder to keep an eye out for HWA and other invasive species in our forests, all very important. Uh, Ali Kasiba and Josh Holman, thank you both very much for making the time to come in today. And uh, I know that you're still engaged in research and whatnot, so I hope you'll accept our invitation to come back and keep us up to date about this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks. Right. Thank you. Uh, that is our program for today. We know you have choices, so thanks for choosing us. I'm Will Michael, inviting you to join us back here each weekday afternoon for another visit across the fence.